So, I've always had people tell me that it would be a good idea to make a video on how XP works on the Hive. I've always kept it as an idea in the back of my mind, but to be quite honest, I never did it because I was too lazy to go into each and every game and test out every way to get XP. Recently, however, it's come to my attention that there's actually a section on the Hive's website that shows every way to get XP in every game. This basically eliminates the reason why I didn't do it in the past, and so in this video, I'm going to go over every way that you can get XP on the Hive and talk about about some of the best strategies that you can use to level up quickly in every game. First, however, if you could leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're a fan of my content, that would be much appreciated. Now, enjoy this video. So, just a little disclaimer, if you've asked me on stream before what the best strategies are to level up, I'll usually say something along the lines of, I don't really care too much about leveling up, I just play the games for enjoyment. This is why I'm a relatively low level in some games like Treasure Wars or Death Run. I'm not really much of a grindy person, I just play the games to have fun. I know that in this video's intro, I said that I'm going to be giving some strategies on the best ways to level up in each game, but just take those with a grain of salt. I'm not really a grinder, I play games for enjoyment, and I'm just going over the ways that would logically makes sense to level up quickly on the Hive. With all of that being said, let's talk about Treasure Wars. In every mode except for Mega Treasure Wars, kills give 5 XP, final kills give 10 XP, destroying a treasure gives 50 XP, and wins also give 50 XP. In Mega Treasure Wars specifically, kills give 4 XP, finals give 8 XP, treasure breaks give 30 XP, and wins give 50 XP. So, the way to get a lot of XP quickly in Treasure Wars is treasure breaks. It gives you the same amount of XP as a win, and if you're good, you can do it multiple times a game. Logically then, you would think that playing solos would be the best way to level up on Treasure Wars. This is because there are seven other teams in Treasure Wars, all of which you can get treasure breaks from. However, most of the people that grind levels in Treasure Wars actually do it in trios. This is because if you're breaking a lot of treasures in solo Treasure Wars, chances are the game is going to take a really long time. In trios, however, each member of your team can go take out an opposing team by themselves, and assuming everyone on your team is fairly decent and you have some okay luck, each team member can get a treasure break, three final kills, and maybe even a couple of other kills along with the win XP. These games usually take no longer than a few minutes, and then you can just go to the next game, rinse and repeat, and get XP really, really quickly. A way to not get XP quickly, however, is playing Mega Treasure Wars. Even if you were legitimately speedrunning it, there's essentially no scenario where you would be getting more XP than if you were just playing any of the other Treasure Wars. Wars game modes. XP's just been nerfed so much in Megas that it's not worthwhile. Now, let's move on to Sky Wars. In every mode except for Sky Royale, each kill gets you 10 XP, every kill that eliminates a team gets you 15 XP, unlocking a mystery chest gives you 10 XP, and wins give you 50 XP. In Sky Royale, kills give you 5 XP, team eliminating kills give you 7 XP, unlocking a mystery chest gives you 10 XP, and wins give you 50 XP. Something to note about Sky Royale though is that I don't think the regular 5 XP kills exist. Since it's a solos game mode, every kill that you get will technically be a team elimination, and the only way you could get respawns or teams would be through a custom server, which doesn't give you XP anyways. Still, farming XP as a whole in Sky Wars basically follows the same rules as Treasure Wars. Play trios, each member of your team goes and takes out another team, and you each get two kills and one final and then the win XP. If done properly and with a little bit of luck, the game shouldn't take more than like two or three minutes, and then you can just re and go next and farm even more XP. Again, very, very similar to Treasure Wars and the methods of efficiently farming. Next up, let's move on to an old favorite, survival games. In SG, each kill gets you 10 XP, reaching deathmatch gets you 15 XP, unlocking a cash cow gets you 5 XP, and every win gets you 30 XP. Now as for leveling up quickly, if I'm being honest, there's no real set way other than just getting a bunch of kills. Playing duos with a teammate is just about the worst way that you can level up in survival games since you have to share kills with your teammate, but playing solo in duos can work. Since most people are going to be on teams with another person, there's less chance of them killing each other, making more kills available for you. Playing duos by yourself can be risky, however, because occasionally you'll run into duos that are actually fairly competent, and it can be kind of difficult to kill both of them. However, solos can also work pretty well for XP, but just know that you'll have to play pretty aggressive just so you can get as many kills as possible before everyone else 
just kills each other. Overall, your survival game's XP grinding experience will probably be pretty slow nonetheless. It takes a lot of time, but eventually you'll get to higher levels since survival games isn't exactly the most difficult PvP game on the Hive. Now, let's move on to Murder Mystery and explain how XP works there. For every coin you collect, you get 2 XP. If you kill the murderer, you get 30 XP. And if you kill someone as a murderer, you get 10 XP. Also, as an innocent player, you get 5 XP for every 30 seconds that you're alive, and then that amount of XP gets doubled if you survive till the end of the game. I feel like Murder Mystery is kind of like survival games leveling in the fact that if you want to level up quickly, you just have to play the game well. If you're playing as an innocent, you should always be collecting as many coins as possible, partially to get as many arrows as possible, and partially to get the XP from coins. I have a theory that you could get a decent amount of XP if, as an innocent, you delay the game as much as possible and survive. You could get up to 100 survival XP a game, but realistically you're probably just better off speedrunning it and trying to kill the murderer for the XP from that. Speaking of speedrunning, that's also what you're going to be doing if you're a murderer in a game, you're just trying to kill as many people as fast as possible so you can go to the next game and get even more XP. Keep in mind for both innocent and murderer that there's no XP reward for winning a game however, so realistically you're just trying to rack up as much XP as possible while playing the game. Also speaking of speedrunning, let's move on to death run where speedrunning actually doesn't really get you any form of XP. As a death, you get 2 XP for killing a player, 6 XP for a double kill, 8 XP for a triple kill, 10 XP for a quad kill, 12 XP for a mega kill, 14 XP for an ultra kill, and 16 XP for a monster kill. As a runner, however, the hive doesn't really tell you how much XP you get. They say, depending on the length of the map, runners earn a varying amount of XP per checkpoint. This kind of makes sense, however, because different death run maps have different numbers of checkpoints, and it wouldn't really be fair to assign a set amount of XP to a checkpoint. While the hive hasn't specifically stated this, this would lead me to believe that there's a set amount of XP that you can get across every map. It's just scaled differently depending on how many checkpoints are on each map. With all of that being said, there's not much that you can do to effectively earn XP as a runner. However, as a death, you can try to get more XP by killing people in the middle of the pack where they're generally more bunched up instead of targeting the few people that are usually up at the front. Next, let's move on to hide and seek where taunting gives you between 3 and 18 XP depending on which taunt you use. If you're a hider, killing a seeker gives you 10 XP, and if you're a seeker, killing a hider gives you 20 XP. Winning the game as a hider gives you 200 XP, while winning the game as a seeker gives you 50 XP. Also as a hider, you get 15 XP for every 60 seconds that you stay alive. Now, Hide and Seek was just updated recently, and they added 30 new levels to the game. A few days ago, I grinded Hide and Seek for a few hours just to see what it was like, and I found out that if you're a seeker, you literally just re queue because you get next to no XP, and if you're a hider, just go to the corner of the map and spam the Llama Balloon taunt emote and hope that the hiders are oblivious enough to not notice a giant Llama Balloon and an explosion. As boring as it is, that's literally the only way that you can quickly level up in Hide and Seek. Now finally, let's move on to every PvPer's favorite game, Just Build. Finishing in first place gets you 15 XP, second place gets you 10 XP, and third place gets you 5 XP. As for ratings, Met gets you 0.5, OK gets you 1, Good gets you 1.5, Great gets you 2, and Love gets you 2.5. As for strategy, I don't really have any for you other than to play the game as it was intended to be played. If you make a build that people like, you'll get more XP. If you make a bad one, you'll get less. That's about all I've got for Just Build and for this video. Be sure to let me know if there are any strategies that you think I missed or other lesser known ones that you think are useful. Now, before we end, as always, I'd like to thank all of my YouTube channel members. They support me for $4.99 a month and their names are displayed up on screen as a token of gratitude from me to them. If you'd like to become a channel member or check out what perks they have, you can do so by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button or by clicking the link in the description. Once again, thank you to all of my members. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.